All right, today let's talk about why some of your Facebook ads have failed. I talk to businesses all the time and they're like, well, we tried Facebook, it didn't work. But let's break down specifically why it may not have worked, right? So in order for the pixel and everything on Facebook to really work is one, you need to install the pixel on your website and your landing pages. And I would do that as a first step, no matter what you do is ask your web developer, ask your marketing group, do I have a pixel installed on my website for Facebook? If not, go get it installed right away because it only learns from the date that you put it on. The next thing you want to do is say, hey, are we spending enough money? You need to spend $3,000 or more a month on Facebook for the first couple months, right? And that's a bigger commitment that most people want to do when they're testing on a new platform. But that's your number one reason that when you test out Facebook, it doesn't work because you didn't put enough money behind getting it to work. The next is it's a 70-30 rule in Facebook. 70% is the quality of your creative and 30% is how well you pick your audiences and segments and all that. Before, a few years ago, it used to be almost all how you picked your audiences and you know that side of it. But now Facebook has really adjusted that. They're really good at the algorithm. Now it's really about how good is your creative? How can it break through the clutter? People are scrolling on Facebook. They have almost no intent to buy anything, right? So your ad has to be spectacular and you have three seconds to catch someone's attention. So when they're scrolling, they'll kind of like eyeball it for a second. And if it looks humdrum, they're just gonna keep going, right? So it has to be really good creative. 70% of your success relies on how good your creative is. Also, Facebook creative goes stale really, really fast. So you can create your creative in these things called modulars. So you could put like, maybe break up your video in three or four pieces, and then you could rearrange the pieces in different ways, and then put that back out as creative. You could test short, you could test images, you could test video. For some industries or some companies, video does better. Some it's static ads, right? So test a variety of things. Also, you have three seconds to catch someone's attention. If you can't do that, it's not gonna be successful. The next part of that is it has to have a level of edutainment. So that means a level of education and then a level of entertainment. It has to be a little bit interesting, right? If you're very boring or if your ad looks like everybody else, you can go to a Facebook ads library and look at what your competition is doing. Look what other successful videos are doing. You just scroll through and get a sense and watch them, right? That will inspire you on what to create next. There was a big shift to go to user generated content for a lot of videos especially for e-commerce and then now there's so much user generated content that it almost doesn't work as well because it's hard to tell the difference right they all look a little bit alike so we talked about 70 30 rule we talked about three seconds we talked about money the last and biggest predictor of success on Facebook is your offer right so if somebody's going to Google ads they already know what they want and they're really outwardly looking to buy. So they are much lower on the funnel. If you think about the funnel is here's level of awareness, here's I'm gonna buy. They're lower. They've already, in a number of different ways, have done their buying and shopping, right? E-commerce or B2B or higher ed and they already know what they're looking for. So then they're gonna click on the paid ad or organic listing and get where they want and have a much uh, lower sales cycle. But if you only focus on those people, they generally are, are doing a little bit of shopping, but you need to also be in the awareness set. So your offer, let's go back to the offer, is incredibly important. So your offer could be like 20% off if you sign up for a newsletter or, you know, the one home remodeling company that I know of, they started offering free boxes if you were moving and they limited it to $50 per person. And they said, hey, if you're moving, here's the, the boxes, come and get them. And that person, when they decided to move into their next place and needed home renovation, guess what they thought of? Then also, when other people asked, hey, do you know somebody, I need a new bathroom or a new kitchen, they were happy to refer somebody out because that person gave them something. That made that when they were moving a little less stressful, right? Because they didn't have to go like figure out where to get boxes from. So they kind of ingratiated themselves, they added value. So your offer doesn't have to be directly related to your product, but it does have to hone in with who your ultimate buyers are. So you gotta spend a little bit of time, who's my persona, what do my buyers want, what do they need? What pain points am I solving for? What's the clarity of message? And what can I offer them that would be valuable if I can't offer them something directly related to my product or service, right? In home remodeling, you can't be like, I'll give you 20% off, because that won't be profitable. <laughs> so you have to figure out other ways 
to get in. If you're a university, you can do things like here's a quiz to, to help you refine what type of program you're looking for or what kind of learner you are, what's your astrology sign versus your study habits. It can be really fun too. It doesn't have to be like super serious. So we talked about offer. Those are all the real components of running great Facebook ads, but there's one more. You could also take your list from your CRM, your customer list, and upload it to Facebook and do something called retargeting. That means even if you don't use Facebook to drive new business, Business, it could help you close current business and help you reduce the velocity of your sales cycle. Yay! So a lot of times people in business B2B are like, I can't find my consumers, but if you already have customers or leads, you can go ahead and then target them specifically. Only if that specific email address visits Facebook will they see this ad. So those ads are more expensive to run, but they can be really, really valuable, especially to help you reduce that, that time of your sales cycle. And while you know that prospect is probably considering two or three different companies, you're standing out, they're seeing you everywhere and they're like, they must be really big, right? So those are all different ways you can make Facebook way more successful for your business. We're gonna come up with more videos, so stay tuned. Share your comments below of some of the things you've tried that really had some great success and maybe not so great success. I'm Renee Seltzer, and until next time, have a great one. Bye.